Glad to be with you again. We are uh, now on page 189 of Search for a Nonviolent Future. I talk about another kind of intervention that a friend of mine in the peace world uh, carried out in the Balkans, where there was such terrible, wrenching, dehumanizing conflict in the 1990s, and how he worked with some young people to try to get them over their uh, aversion to one another, Croatian and Serbian students. And Jan Oeberg, my uh, friend from Transnational Foundation, found out that there were, it took less than an hour, less than one hour to overcome what had been years and years of prejudice that had been created by state-run media. Less than one hour, so I reflect on that. If we could only take the time to reach out to these young people, we could save so much agony that's going on in our society instead of waiting for the outbreaks of violence, being vituperative about that, trying to arrest someone, and so forth. But again, I'd like to, uh, if I may, add a story, and in this case, a very personal one. Uh, my brother, who lives in Canada, uh, because he didn't want to die in Vietnam, uh, was sent, he's a folk musician, and he was sent to uh, this area after the conflict had died down a little bit to play a concert in a high school. And when he got to the high school, the only place available for the concert was in the uh, courtyard, because the classrooms were way too small. The teachers were saying, you're going to have to do two concerts because we have Croatian kids and Serbian kids, and they've never interacted, never interacted. They came into the school by different entrances, went to different classrooms, went home by different exits, had never seen each other. So uh, Eric, my brother, uh, consulted with his group and said, uh-uh, there's going to be one concert. So they started playing a concert for the Serbian kids, and in no time, of course, the doors opened up and all the Croatian kids came in, and they loved the concert, but even more, they loved one another. They were so thrilled to be able to meet with one another. and They were hugging and laughing, and it was quite remarkable, uh, Eric said, to notice all the teachers and the principal around the perimeter scowling. You know, this isn't supposed to happen. So I thought I would share that with you to illustrate once again that uh, if we play our cards right, it should be possible for us to overcome even these deep-seated prejudices. We started by talking about deep-seated in our own central nervous system. We're talking now about how they were embedded in a culture deliberately as a policy of divide and conquer, which led to untold agonies and how in some cases, as I say, if you know what you're doing, have confidence in nonviolence, play your cards right, uh, it is possible to overcome them. So next time we'll go and look at some next steps in creating a nonviolent culture.